again. So we are in the last few days of March and I thought this would be the perfect time to film a video for you guys to give you a tour of all of the seedlings that I have growing before I actually start planting some things out in the garden the end of the week. So I am at home here in my basement where I have two grow light setups. And then I also have another whole setup at my photography studio where my garden is. And so I'm gonna show you everything that I have growing. I have so many seedlings going and I am really excited to get everything planted out in the garden this year. So as far as my actual setups go, and I'll put some pictures up on the screen as I talk about this, but the shelving units I use are a 24 by 36 plastic shelving unit. You can get them in any home improvement store. And the lights that I use are actually shop lights. They are LED 4000 lumen lights. I got mine at Menards, which I think is a regional store for us, but you can also get them on Amazon. You can get them at Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere. I've been using these lights for a couple years and they work really great for me. Now I have them hanging from the chains that come with the lights on the shelves and then I suspend those with S hooks that I get off of Amazon. So a really simple setup that works great and it's actually pretty economical too. So I'm just going to start going through shelf by shelf for you guys and show you everything that I have growing. So on my top shelf, I have my first tray of snapdragons. Now this is the smallest tray that I have going. A lot of these are the Madame Butterfly, and they're starting out a little smaller than the other seedlings that I have for snapdragons, and you will totally see that when I show you those. But I actually also just went through last week and pinched all of my snapdragons, which I did a video on. And so I should start seeing some major growth out of these now. I actually can already see um, at the little, do you call it the armpit of the snapdragon? That sounds kind of weird. I actually can already see new growth coming out from when I pinched them last week. So this is one tray of snapdragons. And then also on this top shelf, this is a tray of stock and flax. Now, for some reason, the middle of my tray does not look very good. I wonder if that just got a little oversaturated. Um, but the rest of my flax look really good. I'm losing my markers. All right, so the rest of my flax look really good and my stock looks awesome. Now, stock is something I have never grown before, so I am really excited to see how these do. I did thin these all um, in a video to where I would only have the double blooms, none of the single blooms, and so that will be fun to see if I was correct when I thinned those out. And this was kind of an addition in my seed starting. This was not on my original grow list. Um, it was kind of a last minute addition. So I am not 100% sure where these are gonna go in the garden but I'll find a spot, I'm sure. So then on my second shelf, I have just a small tray here. Um, these are some dahlias I started from seed. I'm a little disappointed. Um, a few of them died off. I'm pretty sure it was my air in the watering, but I do still have three really strong plants, which is totally fine because I have a ton of dahlia tubers that I'll be planting. I just like to start a few from seed every year just to see how they will turn out. And then this is my Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. This is the plant that I'm doing for the single seed challenge. And as you can see, it's growing really, really good. And these plants can get huge, like six feet tall. So one of these I think will be enough for the first season just to test it out and see how it grows. Then on this shelf are my other two trays of snapdragons. Look at how awesome these look. These are all of my Potomac snapdragons. Now before I pinch these, they seriously were this high. They were hitting the bottom of my grow lights. And so it definitely was good that I went ahead and pinched these. I pinched all my snapdragons above the first set of true leaves and I can already see new growth starting since I pinched them last week. And snapdragons will also start branching out from the base of the plant. So I'm sure I'll be seeing that really soon as well. So these are all of my Potomac snapdragons. And then this tray, which is also looking really good. These are mostly the Costa snapdragons. And then on the end here, I do have a rocket mix. So these are looking really good too. Okay, so the third tray down... This is um, some white wave petunias. 
you can see I only have one cell empty of those. And then this side, which I only have half germination on, which is totally fine. This is the Maltese Cross Dawn Sky. Um, it was something that I found the seed online for. I had never um, grown it before or heard of it, so I just wanted to try it out. So it looks like I have about eight plants in here, which will be plenty. Okay, so here is my tray of Lysianthus. Now I started off with two 200 cell trays of Lysianthus. This last weekend I went through and transplanted all of my Lysianthus into this one cell tray um, just to make room, well for two reasons. I wanted to make room on my grow shelf for um, yet another cell tray because I'm totally running out of room. But I also was starting to develop a little bit of algae on the soil, which I did not use vermiculite. Um, I think I will try to use vermiculite next year. Um, but I was starting to see some algae growth and I did not want that to take over because these are going to still be in the cell tray for probably another month. So I just went ahead and transplanted everything into this one tray. And I think they're doing pretty good. Um, I would like them to be a little bit bigger, but I'm guessing that now that I have these transplanted into some fresh soil and I will also be regularly fertilizing them, I think they're gonna start putting on some growth. I actually can see um, some of them, I can see a difference already from just a few days ago. You know, Lysianthus is so hard to grow. Um, I didn't have very many last year at all. It's definitely a learning experience. So if I even end up planting half of these in the ground, I will be really happy. And then the last tray on this third shelf is Feverfew. This looks awesome. What a pretty plant. Now I do need to go through and possibly thin these out. Um, I don't know, comment down below if you guys thin out your Feverfew. Some of my cells only have one plant. Um, some of them just have two. So let me know if you think I can leave two in a cell because ideally that would be the easy way. They're looking really great so far. All right, then my bottom shelf, I have three trays. This is a tray of Dianthus, which is looking pretty good. Um, I had some spotty germination. Looks like this whole row didn't come up. Maybe I forgot to seed it, I don't know. I have a couple peach colored varieties that I'm growing. So I think those will be fun. This tray is half Adgeratum and half Larkspur. I have one tiny larkspur that has started, so maybe I'll have some more come up. I don't know, but the ageratum is looking really good. And this tray is Bupleurum, and it is looking real sad. I am tempted to reseed this because I know I should have more coming up than that. Um, I am honestly not sure why these are not coming up. I know it's better to direct, direct seed these, but I kind of wanted to get a head start, so that's why I was trying it inside. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions, comment down below for the Blue Plurum. Okay, so that is everything on my first shelf. Let's move on to the second shelf. Okay, so the first two things I have are those dahlia cuttings that I took recently. They're looking a little wilty, but from what I have read, that is totally normal. For about 10 days to two weeks, they're gonna look a little bit wilted, and then all of a sudden, when they start developing roots, they're gonna perk up. Um, this one looks better than this one does, so we'll see. I have a Sweet Natalie, and I have a Linda's Baby, and I do have these on a heat mat because that is going to help develop the root growth. I did use rooting hormone. This one is looking quite a bit sadder than this one. So cross your fingers, these are gonna work for me. All right, this tray is looking awesome. This is all yarrow, which I am really excited about this year. I have four different varieties that I have planted. Last year, I had a few single plants of yarrow in my garden of different varieties, and I just love the texture that it added to my bouquets. So I'm growing a ton of yarrow this year. And in my area, yarrow is a perennial, and so this will come back year after year, which is even more exciting. And all of these plants are looking just awesome. Then this is a tray of asters, and I had one whole variety that did not germinate. Those were the 
um, Tower Violet. I'm pretty sure that those seeds were a few years old, so um, I'm guessing that that was the case on those. But the rest of them are all looking pretty good. I grew a few asters last year, and I loved the way they looked in my bouquets. Um, I did notice last year when I planted them out in the garden that mine were really yellow, and I think I just under-fertilized them. And so I am really making sure to fertilize these well this year while they're still in the trays, and I'm really keeping a close eye on them. These are starting to yellow just a little bit. I think that they actually looked worse last week. I just fertilized these on Sunday, and so I'm hoping that with a weekly fertilizer, um, that I'll stay on top of everything. Now, the fertilizer that I use, I use this um, Espoma Grow Organic Fertilizer. It's a liquid. I use a half strength once a week. And I think I'm running out, so I guess I better order some more. All right, here is another tray of Ageratum. Looking awesome. I have never grown this before, and I'm really excited to see how this does in my garden this year. These plants are just beautiful and really starting to branch out from the base. These are gonna be great in the garden. Okay, I have one more 24 cell tray of petunias. Now petunias obviously are not something that I'm growing for cut flowers. I'm growing three varieties just to use in my planters and my window boxes that are in front of my business. Um, I usually buy a ton of the Proven Winners petunias and plants every spring, but I thought, why not try to start my own from seed for fun this year? So um, they're looking good so far. This is my eucalyptus. Looks like I have about 10 plants left. I lost three. I hope those keep going. I've never grown eucalyptus before. So cross your fingers for those. Um, I have one more shelf to show you guys. All right, this is my basil. I had 100% germination on my basil, which is not surprising, because basil usually grows really well from seed. Now this is gonna be a filler in my cut flower bouquets. I have the dark opal basil, a lemon basil, and the cinnamon basil. This is gonna be my first succession planting, and then in about a month, I'm gonna do a whole nother 72 cell tray of these same varieties. So these are looking great. Okay, this tray is globe thistle. I have about 50% germination going. Um, looks like some of the seeds which you put right on top of the soil just kind of rotted away. So I'm wondering if next year when I start these, I need to press them down in the soil so they can root in a little better. But I have the star frost and the blue glow. These are also perennials in my area. I'm gonna tuck these in my cottage garden area. I'm hoping to use these for um, my bouquets and for some dried flowers. All right, two more trays to show you guys here and then we're gonna head to my studio where I'll show you the whole entire other shelf I have going. Okay, so this tray is all vegetables. This is one that my husband and I just started about two days ago. So I'm just gonna lift the humidity dome off so you guys can see it, but then I'm gonna keep it on there. And I ran out of cell trays and so what he could get locally was one of these Jiffy plug trays, which for vegetables, I think that's gonna be just fine. But in here I have um, all of my herbs, I have a bunch of tomatoes, I have a ton of different types of lettuce, kale. Um, what else do I have in here? Celery, cabbage, and I am seeing a whole bunch of sprouts everywhere in just two days. That is so crazy. So it feels really good to get a bunch of our vegetables already started too. Okay, and then the last tray that I have going, this is another one of those Jiffy plug trays. These are all of my husband's peppers. He's got a lot of different kinds. And then, so these are all peppers. These last couple rows on the end are my canning tomatoes. And I don't see any action out of these yet, but I'm sure in a couple days we'll see some sprouting from here. All right, so that is everything that I have growing here at home. This video is going to pick up back at my photography studio where I have a whole nother shelf full of all kinds of seedlings. So let's head there. All right, so I'm in the furnace room at my photography studio in front of my third grow shelf setup. 
Um, not the most glamorous room, but this is right off of the door that goes through my garden shed to my garden. So this is super convenient. Um, I actually have some plans to redo this room for the year. I have another whole shelf off to this side where all of my gardening supplies are. Those are gonna get moved out of this room and into the garden shed. This grow shelf is going to shift over and maybe I'll be able to fit another grow shelf in this room, but right in this spot I hope to put a refrigerator or a cooler so that I can keep flowers um, before the market. So anyway, that's kind of the plans for this room for this year and so I'll probably give you guys some updates once I get that project started. But anyway, um, I have three shelves full on this shelf. So um, these are mostly ranunculus and then the rest of the seed trays are all seeds that I started just last Friday, which was um, four days ago. So we'll see if we have any growth on those. Now I also do have a couple dahlia tubers here in pots. These are the two that I took those cuttings off of. Um, you can clearly tell that this one is sprouting really good again. This has um, two growth points on it. Um, this one, oh my gosh, this one has three growth points on it. So I'm probably not gonna take any more cuttings off of these this year unless this one really starts to sprout really good. Um, but I'm just gonna let these continue to grow on and then I will plant these directly into the ground with growth already established on them. So I'm gonna set these aside and then show you my trays. All right, so on this middle shelf, this is my first batch of ranunculus. These are so ready to go in the ground. Now, this year was my first year starting ranunculus and I definitely learned um, a couple of things. These are started in just regular potting mix. I pre-soaked the corms and I do have a couple videos on this. Now, I was really worried that I was gonna keep them too wet and they were gonna start rotting. Well, I quickly learned that I did not keep them wet enough and it was hindering the root growth. So once I started really keeping them saturated, the roots took off and I started seeing green growth shoot up immediately. So I have this tray, which I started first, and then two weeks later, I started three more trays. So let me show you what those look like. So I'm gonna move a couple things around here. So they all look about the same. I guess this one might be a little further along. So here's one, which if you look at this tray compared to the other tray, it's kind of weird that there's two weeks between when I actually started these because these are getting really far along too. So that just goes to show how I stunted the growth of my first ones just by not keeping them wet enough. Um, and these actually need to be watered again today. And I just watered them yesterday. Um, it is not humid at all in my building this time of year. At home, we actually have to run a humidifier, so it does not surprise me that these dry out quickly. Now, I am planning on planting my first batch of ranunculus out in the garden in three days this Friday. We're supposed to get some snow tomorrow, um, just kind of a slushy mix. It's not gonna last, but starting Friday, all of our lows are consistently in the mid 30s, and it doesn't show any more 20s, so I'm gonna do a video on it when I plan them out, but I'm gonna put my first stuff in the garden this week. I am so excited. So here's another tray, that second batch. Not as far along as that tray. Um, the third tray looks about exactly like this one. Okay, then the tray that was right here, this heat mat is still on because it is not fully germinated yet. But this tray is all status. Okay, actually it might be fully germinated. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this lid off. I looked at it yesterday and I swear I did not see a lot of growth. But you can clearly see that there is green in most of those cells, so that is awesome. So I have seven different varieties of status in this tray. Status, I grew four plants of last year, four. That is it, because I was testing it out, and I got a lot of status off those four plants. So I can't imagine what I'm gonna get off of 72 this year of all these varieties. I'm so excited. So now that I'm putting this back um, here with the lid off, I'm gonna unplug this heat mat, and then I'll be done with that. 
it'll be really nice when I do get these trays of ranunculus planted out because then I'll have even more room on these grow shelves because also this week I have to start all of my zinnia trays and I think I have about four 72 cell trays of my first batch of those I'm gonna start um, then this is one of those 24 cell trays that is the um, gardener supply grow ease and I have a hundred percent germination on this so I'm gonna take this lid off and also turn the heat mat off but I have a few different things planted in this tray um, this is kind of my variety tray that I'm just starting a few of each so I have um, these five tags are for gomfrina last year I grew about 20 plants of gomfrina I did not need that many at all if you've ever gone, grown gomfrina before you know it is a total workhorse and so this year I'm starting, how many do I have? I have 10 plants, that will be plenty. I use them as accent flowers in my bouquets, but then they also dry perfectly. So I have five different colors of that. And then in here I have three different kinds of marigolds. I like marigolds in the fall to pop into bouquets. And so I have two kinds of white marigolds and then the giant orange marigold, which I think will be a perfect color in the fall. And then um, this last row I have four amaranth plants. Amaranth did not do well for me last year. I'm pretty sure it was my fault. So I'm just going to try out four plants. I have a specific spot out in my cottage garden that those are going to go this year. Um, I'm going to pinch them and see how big they get and uh, just see what I get from them. That's kind of an experiment. So um, anyway, this is a good miscellaneous tray. All right, this tray... All right, this looks really good too. I think I'm gonna be able to turn all of my heat mats off. Um, so I ran out of 72 cell, um, the actual cell trays, but I had bottom trays left. So this one is one of those 24 cell trays and then another random um, piece that I had over from last year. So this is all Celosia. And I have six different kinds of Celosia here. Uh, most of them are like the regular plume kind of Celosia. I do have um, one, I think it's called the Chief Mix, that is that um, different kind of head that I'm pretty sure you don't pinch those, but you do pinch these. And so I need to make sure to check that seed packet to make sure that I'm doing that one correctly. But these all came up awesome. All right, and then my last tray... This one, I'm gonna have to keep this humidity dome on. Looks like another couple days because I don't see total germination in all these. I think I have about 75% going so far. This is all Rebecca, and I have five different kinds of Rebecca in here. Um, Sahara, I am growing again this year. It worked awesome last year. And then the other kinds I have are Cherry Brandy, Cherokee Sunset, Prairie Sun, and Moroccan Sun. So Rebecca is going to be a really good summer and fall flower, um, but I'm going to keep the humidity dome on this one and I will keep it on the heat mat and then I will check this tomorrow and maybe I can take all this off. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of the seedlings that I have growing. Um, again, I have one round of seeds that I have left to start, which I'm gonna do this Friday in three days. I'm going to be starting all of my zinnias. Last year, my first round of zinnias I direct seeded, which I had done every year, and those always work great. But I did start, for an experiment last year, a second succession sowing of zinnias. I started those inside. I did not see any difference in their growth so I'm gonna be starting all of my first round of zinnias inside this year so I have four trays I'm gonna start those on Friday and then I have a couple other random things not necessarily for cut flowers that I'm starting I like to grow black-eyed Susie vines every year um, to grow up some trellises in the garden and so I'm gonna be starting a few varieties of those on Friday as well um, so anyway, I'm going to make sure to keep you guys updated when I'm planting everything out in the garden. The ranunculus are going in this Friday, and then hopefully a couple weeks before our average last frost date, I can put some of those early season crops in the ground. So it's all going to be starting really soon. I can't wait. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon.